Today, I want to have a look at how we can build a NLP powered uh, intelligent search for video. And more specifically, we're gonna have a look at how we can do that for YouTube. Now, YouTube is obviously huge, but it started with a very simple video titled, I'm at the zoo. This video was a 19 second clip of YouTube's co-founder, literally at the zoo, showing you some elephants in the enclosure behind him. And it seems really silly now, but when you think about this, that was back in 2005. And up until that point, the only sort of video or insights into other people's lives that we, we will have seen is that of celebrities or politicians and all of it was very orchestrated and, and not natural. So YouTube sort of brought this very unique age where we're able to actually see into other people's lives and normal people's lives like me or you and see just what they are doing. and. Okay, I'm at the zoo, it's a kind of odd, very short video, uh, but it really marks the beginning of this almost explosion of normal people made content, which I think it, it is really cool. And now what YouTube brings to us is a lot more than just uh, an insight in someone's life. It can really range from anything. You're watching this video right now to learn about how to build a search tool for video using natural language processing. And without YouTube, uh, sure, there'd probably be something else, but YouTube was really the place where this all started. So building a search tool that allows you to search through some of the most engaging content on the planet, I think is really cool and of course we can just use normal google search or youtube's actual search bar but as we'll see we can actually build something that maybe does quite well in comparison to those tools so before we really jump into the uh, technology and how to build it uh, let's have a quick look at a few examples of what we are going to actually be able to build after following through this video. So this is just a really simple interface built using Streamlit. And we can just say, okay, what is deep learning? And okay, we're gonna have here a few videos. I think we have five. Okay, and uh, we can just kind of click on one of these. So, I mean, all of these seem pretty relevant, but I just wanna show you something really cool. If we click on one of these, will take us straight to the point of the video. So here it started at 3.29. And it's going to show us what is deep learning, okay? So that's really cool. Like straight away, it's almost like a very intelligent and fast uh, search tool for YouTube. And YouTube is full of amazing content. So this is, is, I think, really cool. I was playing around with this quite a lot. If we're interested in something else, so or what is a transform model? What is a transformer model? What is a BERT transform model? Okay, so BERT, this looks pretty promising. Transformers here, looks pretty good. And then if we have a look at this one's also well, the first result, this is the so most relevant. And this explains BERT pretty well as well. So. That's really cool. And what I think is coolest about this is we just use off the shelf models and put this together super quickly. It is uh, not complicated as you will see to put all this together. You can probably do it within the next 20 minutes after following this video. So we're gonna have a look at this data set here. So if we have a look in here, we have 116,000 text files. And we also have the audio files as well. 
So we're only going to use the text files and these are basically for every small segment of video we have the subtitles from that segment and that's what we're going to be performing our search on. Now let's have a look at what uh, how we can download this data from, from Kaggle and also what the data actually looks like. So to start you will need an account so once you have creating an account on Kaggle, you go to the right here, you go to, I think, account. We have this nice picture of me with hair and we can scroll down and there's this little API section here and we can create a new API token. Once you've done that, that's going to download a Kaggle.json file to your, to your computer. And we use that Kaggle.json a file to authenticate the Kaggle Python client. So the Kaggle Python client, we just pip install Kaggle. Uh, and then when you run this import Kaggle the first time, if you don't have that Kaggle.json downloaded onto your system, uh, this will come up with an error and it will tell you where to place your Kaggle.json. So you just, whatever directory it tells you to put it in, put your Kaggle.json in there, rerun import Kaggle and it should work. And then to use our, or to use this, uh, we just run this. So we're, so this is in the command line. You can also do this in a terminal window. Um, Kaggle data sets download. And this is that data set I just showed you. Uh, we will need to unzip that. And once we unzip that, you will find everything in this uh, data directory here. Now you can see in this data directory, we there are a lot of files. So all of these represent a video ID. Okay. So if we go into here, we have all these timestamps and this is just a range of a, of a timestamp. And in there we have the audio that represents the, the audio from that range. And we also have the subtitles from that range. So if we look over here, so within the range of, um, from, three seconds in to about six seconds in the, the word or the words spoken in the video are machine learning. It's a buzzword, but I, and then we're on to the next timestamp, uh, which would be here. We have look. So was, but I would also claim it's a lot more than, and then you know, I assume they're going to talk a <laughs> Talk about how machine learning is, is more than a buzzword. That's fine. So yeah, that's what we have there, but that's very little. You, you saw in that little app that we had like thumbnails, we had the video title, which we don't have in that data set. And we even, I think we had the video description as well. Okay, so you can see all of that here. Uh, we didn't have any of this in that in that data set. So how do we do that? How do we, how do we scrape that data? To do that, we need a few things. So we need beautiful soup, uh, TQDM, you don't, you don't necessarily need it, but it's, it's best we, we do. And data sets, we use data sets here because rather than having all of this data stored locally, we can actually save it to the hooking face hub. And if you do, if you're not really interested, you just want to build this up really quickly, you can download that data and I will show you how you can do that in what is probably the next chapter of this video. So you can hover over the timeline uh, of this video and you'll be able to see uh, the next chapter. And at the start of that, you'll be able to see how we can load that data set uh, directly from hooking face rather than going through all this pre-processing. But I want to show you because this is how you, you like a big part of machine learning and building these things is the pre-processing. So it's, it would be a shame to miss it. So we can see yep, what I showed you before. We have video IDs, which are just a, a list of the directories. In each one of those, we have the timestamps and we can load them. So, so we have in data, video ID, splits, uh, and then we have the, the subtitles.txt file. Okay, cool. And what I want to do is just loop through all these files uh, to give us that, you know, give us what we can get from those files. So that is the video ID 
from the directory names. The text from subtitles dot text. Uh, the start second, end second, which we can get from the you know, directory uh, timestamps, and also the URL because the URL is actually we can pull that from the video ID. Okay. So I won't go through this in too much depth, uh, but what we're doing is we're going through each one of those splits, extracting that small chunk of text, it's a very small chunk of text, if you remember, it's just a few seconds long. So with Q&A, we really want to have longer chunks of text than like five words. So what I've done here is said, okay, once we reach about three or four sentences, um, we are going to save that as a chunk. Okay, there are better ways to do this. It's like a, a very good approach is to have overlapping chunks so that you're not missing anything at all there because we might be cutting things off right in the middle of a sentence. It's probably not the best idea, uh, but just for this demo, it's, it's good enough. It's not a problem. So we create our start and end seconds using the timestamps that we have in that directory name. Okay, so that's literally just the number of seconds into the video that we are at. And then we create a document, which is just all of the details for that particular chunk of text, including the video that it comes from, uh, the text itself, the sign end seconds of that chunk of text, and also this, which is the URL. Um, so the URL directs us to the video, the specific video, and also the start of that chunk of text that we're going to be returning later on. And yeah, so we create a list of documents like that. Uh, shouldn't take long. So this is one example. And you can see, okay, like here, we kind of just cut off in the middle of a, a sentence. And it's not perfect as well, but that's fine. It works well enough. So it would be better to have some sort of window where we overlap. So we, for example, took this paragraph and then we maybe took half the first, the second half of the paragraph followed by the next half of the next uh, document. But this is, is good enough. And you see a few of those there and we have the start and end seconds URL, which you can see we have the 41 seconds, 41. Okay. Now, as I said before, there's that other metadata uh, that we don't have in here. Now, you, you might need to, if you're on Mac, you might need to pin the, uh, pip or conda install LXML, and that is for Beautiful Soup. Uh, Beautiful Soup is a, like a data scraping library or, or HML processing library almost. Uh, so it's really good when we're scraping information from websites, uh, which we can do. So we can, okay, we're going to go to each video and we're going to capture the data, thumbnail, and any other uh, information we, we can from there. So in this case, we just have the, the title and the, the thumbnail. And we saw those within this metadata uh, dictionary. Okay, so we have title, thumbnail. Um, if there's an error, so there were a couple of um, exceptions here. Rather than just throwing an error and, and not returning anything or, or stopping the process, I'm just returning an empty title and thumbnail because there, there's two out of the 127 that we scraped there. So I, I didn't really see it. it's too much of an issue. Okay. So now we have the document, uh, which is what we originally pulled. And then we have the title and thumbnail. Uh, so what we kind of need to do here is, is pull those together. And there we have our sort of full, um, our full document. Okay. So when we are saving things to the Hug and Face Hub, we can just save it as a JSON lines file. Okay, so it's like the this list of dictionaries. We save that to a JSON L file, and then you can actually just upload that directly to Hooking Face. So that's uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay, so as promised, 
this is how you can download the data that we just created. So super easy. It's exactly the same as what you saw before. We have video ID, text, start, end, URL, title, and thumbnail. And we have 11,000 items there. Okay. And so we have 11,000 sort of documents and that is spread across 127 videos or you know, unique videos, as far as I can remember. And we can just see one of those and you can see we, we've already seen this example from before. So it's exactly the same, but obviously a lot easier uh, for us to actually use because we're just pulling it from Hug and Face Hub, which I think is, is really cool. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually index all those documents within Effective Database. Of course, we're using Pinecon here. So first thing we need to do to begin doing that is initialize the sentence transformer. So the sentence transformer is a model that is going to take the, the text and convert it into a vector, which we can then place inside our vector database and use that to um, perform our sort of intelligent semantic search through all of those documents. So we have the match sequence length, uh, 128 here. So I use this to come up with this sort of three to four sentence length of our paragraphs, um, because typically a, a token, which is, is what this is, 128 tokens, it's typically going to be something like three to five characters. So we'll go with three um, characters here. And so, so that's why that's where we got the 360 from. And we have this 768 sentence embedding dimensionality. So that's important. So we pull that in here to the embedding dim variable. And then we're going to use that when we are initializing our, um, our index. So we need to get an API key for this. So you go to app.pinecone.io, you create an API key. Uh, and then you can just go here and <laughs> take that. So if you're just looking at where to actually get your API key, okay, so you go within your your project, it's probably gonna be called someone's default project. You click in there, you go to API keys, and then you have this, you just copy this, and then you would paste it inside this. Pretty simple. Uh, and then we can create our index, uh, whatever you, you can call it, whatever you want. I call it YouTube search because that's what this is for me. Again, you can call it whatever you want. For this model, we need to use cosine similarity and we need to align the model embedding dimension and the dimensionality of our index. Okay, so that's what I've done there. And then we connect to our new index using the name that we gave it here. So what I'm gonna do is index our data in batches of 64. The data we insert into our index will include the document ID, the embedded vector that we create using the sentence transform model, and any metadata we'd like to include. So that's what we saw before, the title, start seconds, the text itself. We're gonna include all of that in there. So to do that, we create this loop. Uh, this is where I'm using TQDM. This is just a set, this is a progress bar so that we can see you know, how long this is gonna take. It shouldn't take too long though, by the way. And what we do, so in batches of 64, I'm going to encode all of the text. I'm going to create the, the IDs. So we have two sets of, so we have a video ID, but the video ID is not unique for every single um, snippet. So what I'm doing here is taking video ID and a start second, because that is unique and placing those together. Okay, and then what we're doing is creating the metadata. So I just want these items uh, from the metadata from before. So I'm just pulling those in. There's nothing, nothing particularly unique there. Okay, and then I'm just upsetting all those. So inserting everything into Pinecone, the IDs, the embeddings, and the metadata, and yeah. Just adding all that to Pinecone, super easy. Uh, and then we describe our index size. You don't need to do this, but this is so we can see what is in there. So we have the dimensionality, how full our index is. We don't have much in there at the moment, so it's 
it's not very full. You can usually fit about a million uh, embeddings into a typical, uh, what we call pod, which is like a hardware unit of the, of the vector database. You can have more pods if you need more than that. And yeah, so this is our vector count. We have just over 11,000 items in there. And then we go, this is what we were doing before. What is deep learning? Uh, and then we return those results. So this is just a text. And yeah, everything is pretty relevant there. So that is how it works. It's pr pretty, I think, simple. Um, the only other thing to do is actually put all that into a streaming app, which is not hard at all. Okay, so this is our code. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm sorry if this is kind of small, but it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to get that all on, squeeze into the screen. So, yeah, I mean, the same as before, we're just initializing things. Uh, we have this little card, which is like the, each component that, or result that we return, it's just HTML, really basic HTML, so nothing complicated there. Um, and then, yeah, we're just using Streamlit components. Streamlit right, markdown, there's nothing nothing really in there. We have the search bar. Whenever there's the search bar has something inside it, we, we search and just return that information in the format of a card. And all that together is how we build this. So it's really, I think, super straightforward and really easy to use. Yeah, that's it for for this video. I hope this has been, been useful and at least inside for how, as to how you can build something like this. Of course, this is just one example, like YouTube search, video search. Um, you can you can search through anything that you can imagine, as long as you have some sort of data that represents it and some way to represent that uh, sort of data as a question and answer format. Uh, you can you can you can build something like this super easily. So. I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.